Greetings. This is a uh, going to be about trigonometric ratios, the exciting world of trigonometry, and we're going to start off by looking at this triangle that we've been looking at recently, which is a, of course, a 30-60-90 triangle. And one of the observations that you can make here is, when you look at this thing, um, the if I'm standing in this 30-degree angle over here, and I look across over there, that that side over there across me, the opposite side of where I'm standing is 5. And the hypotenuse, this, this side right here is the hypotenuse, is 10. And that turns out to be 1 half. And one of the things we discovered in some of those explorations we did before is that that's going to happen every time. It doesn't matter how big the triangle is. It, and we also sort of drew this this ideal... 30, 60, 90 triangle where this is 1 and this is 2 and root 3 and all 30, 60, 90 triangles are similar to that. And uh, so that's really the beginning of trigonometry right there and that there's a certain ratio of one side of a triangle to another side of a triangle or across from a certain angle. Um, and this is a specific angle, 30 degrees. That only happens with 30 degrees. If I'm standing, if I if I move over here and I stand in the 60 degree angle, okay. Now I look across, and and every time I'm standing here, that opposite side is going to be, you know, here it's five root three in this case, and the hypotenuse is 10, and that. Uh, simplifies to root three over two, and that's gonna that's gonna happen every time I stand in a sixty degree angle. And again, it doesn't matter how big the triangle is. Well, that's where we're going with this. So let's look at the next the next stuff here. Um, I'm gonna here here is a triangle, and uh, if I'm I'm thinking about when I'm the way I've got this marked, I've got I'm standing over here. Here's where I'm standing. I'll put myself here as a little stick figure of me standing there. And I think it's a good idea to actually think about you physically standing in a one angle or another. So I'm standing in angle A, and I'm looking. And as I'm standing here, uh, the side across from me, little a, is, is the opposite of where I'm standing. And little b, the side b, is the adjacent side to where I'm standing because it's right next to me. And the hypotenuse, well, that's also next to me, but that's a special side. That's always the hypotenuse. Well, we know where that is across from the right angle. Well, uh, there's these words I've got written over here, sine, cosine, tangent. These are th three trig ratios. And they have definitions based on where you're standing in the triangle. Um, we're going to use these words. So the sine is defined to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In this particular case, where I'm standing right now, that would be side A over side C, or whatever those lengths are. So if it was a if I was standing in a 30 degree angle, that could be 5 and 10, and A over C would equal one half. Okay. That is the sine ratio. It's a specific number. The cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay, and in that case, that would be B over C. Or, if it was, again, a 30-degree triangle, that would be square root of 3 over 2. Where tangent is, whoops, Tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. And that, in this case, would be side A over side C. Okay. Well, here's a, here's a problem. is You just learned three definitions, sine, cosine, tangent. These are all new words to you. This is confusing. There's opposite. There's hypotenuse. There's adjacent. They go in different places and different things. So how are you going to remember that? Well, here's the classic way of remembering this thing, Sokotoa. You may have heard this before from friends and relatives and math buddies, whatever. 
but Sokotoa is the way many, many people remember this. You got to spell it right, though, however. It's Soka because it's, it's opposite. These things represent the fractions. So S stands for sine. O stands for opposite, H stands for hypotenuse, so the so in Sokotoa is opposite over hypotenuse. The ka is cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The toa is opposite over adjacent. So this is a really great memory way of uh, jarring your memory about what size, what, what do you have when you're, when you're setting these things up. Okay, so I want to do a, a problem, show some examples here. And uh, so here's a triangle, and uh, the top here it says trig uh, two things we can solve for in right triangles. I'm only going to talk about one of them right now, and I'll do another podcast that talks about the other thing we'll do. But if we know a side of an and if we know a side and an angle, we can set up ratios to solve for the other sides. So I can write, and I want you to write equations for these things. So for example. Uh, I'm standing in 38 over here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put myself right over there. And if I'm standing in the 38 degree angle, and I write this, I write this down, x over 11, what am I talking about? Well, that is opposite. x is the opposite. 11 is the hypotenuse. So I've got opposite over hypotenuse. Well, that we just decided was called the sine. Well, it's the sine of that angle. 38 degrees. Now remember when we did this with with uh, sine or uh, with uh, special right triangles, the sine of 30 degrees would be the opposite, the, the side opposite of the side opposite the 30 degree angle, which we decided in our little ideal 30, 60, 90 triangle was one, and the hypotenuse is two. So the sine of 30 degrees is one half well every angle has its own special ratio there not just not this is where we say that every triangle is special sine of 30 degrees is one half but the sine of 38's got a special number too it's just not as common as as the one half so let me let me actually pull out this little triangle i've got over here that's hiding in the wings that is this let's say this is sort of our idealized triangle right triangle that's got a 38 degree angle in it of course we could figure out the other angle but we're not going to do that right now but we'll do it later uh, but here is um we would get out our calculator let me show you this for a second and um, let me tell you tell you i'll have a little thing about calculators here and this calculator and graphing calculator I have this mode button up here if you press that, you see this. Make sure you're in degree mode down here on the third line. And whatever calculator you're using, make sure you're in degree mode. So let me show you something about this, this little idealized 30 uh, triangle with a 38 degree angle in it. The sine of 38 degrees is a number, 0.61566. 0.61566. Did I do that right? Okay. Um, so the ideal triangle, and I can even name the other side. I'm going to use the cosine button to do that. Oops. Darn. I'm having calculator problems here. But anyway, uh, the cosine of 38 degrees is 0.788. So just like the just like the 30, 60, 90 triangle had an idealized thing where we had 1, 2, and the square root of 3, this is 0.61566, 1, and 0.788. Okay, that's what that triangle would look like. And it's going to happen for every third and every Every right triangle that's got a 38 degrees uh, in it is going to have those ratios, no matter how big or small. Well, this one we're looking at has a hypotenuse of 11, not 1. So we can set this up. Here, here's, here's our uh, equation that we're going to solve. Well, we, this is a pretty simple equation to solve. I multiply both sides by 11. 
11 times that side and 11 times that side. I'm going to rewrite that as x equals 11 times sine of 38 degrees. Well, the sine of 38 degrees is that 0.61566. I don't think you should write that down. What you should really do on your calculator is... What you should do on your calculator is enter it like this, 11 times the cosine, or I'm sorry, the sine of 38. And you press enter, and you get that number. That's how long x is. x is 6.77 long. whatever units you're using here. Let's say it's inches or meters or whatever. Okay, that's how we use trig ratios. First off, we write the trig ratio, and then we solve it on our calculator. We do a little bit of algebra, perhaps, and then we, then we punch it into our calculator, and we get that. That's it.